Alrighty, friends, we are back for your favorite podcast show of the week. This is Location Weekly. This is episode number 683, and we are recording on August the 19th. How are you, Brianna? I'm good. I'm good. La- last couple weeks of uh, the summer. So it's getting real, man. I'm not ready yet. Like, you know, I- I'm still wanting to have like another trip or something. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. So, well, I had a bit of a road trip this past weekend. So on Friday, um, I drove down to Chicago and uh, had a meeting with a sports marketing agency called Revolution, where our our good friend, our mutual friend, Kurt Johnson, uh, now works. And, um, you know, had an interesting chat with them. And then I kind of strategically planned it. So Friday afternoon, the the Jays happened to be uh, playing the Cubs at Wrigley. So, you know. I went and did that too. So that that was most of my weekend and then driving in the rain all the way back on Saturday. So yeah. Yeah. But it sounds like a fun road trip. It was good. I mean, it was, we didn't win, but it was like a super entertaining game. The Jays uh, tied it in the bottom of the ninth down three and forced it into extra innings. And then they lost in the extra innings, but it was, so it was like, it was a good entertaining game. Right. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I, um, I forgot to mention, I watched a lot of jujitsu this week and there's like a big jujitsu tournament, actually two going on and my husband's really into it. So, um, you know, you like start watching it and then I got into it and the kids got into it. So we were all like up to the wee hours watching. Nice. <laughs> like, that's good. Fun times. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Go. Well, and nice that you could do it as a family. So there you go. Exactly. Um, well, some other fights. Let's see what's fighting in tech to this week, right? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) All right, lead us off. All right, a company out of San Jose, California called TapClicks. Um, They have a smart marketing cloud offering and some solutions. Um, And they have launched something they're calling TapMap. So this is basically like an advanced geo visualization feature. Um, so it's enhancing the platform's current geographical charting capabilities. Um, so they're thinking about like businesses, they can integrate this and analyze in a lot of detail. I don't know what those details are, but, um, to make more, I would say advanced marketing decisions and strategies with precision. So they have all this location-based data that's coming in and it's helping them drive more decisions. I don't know what those are. I think we hear these like catchphrases a lot. And I feel like a lot of the platforms we were even talking about, I think it was like Yelp and um, some others that are doing these location-based like marketing cloud features and services. And so sometimes it's really hard to know like what exactly is happening, but they say that they uh, provide businesses and marketers with tools they need to utilize local and regional geo data. Um, for more effective campaigns. And they have these customizable maps that are interactive data overlays. Um, you know, I think that like there is there is a level of this that's beneficial. Um, you know, it's like, it's all been done before. I think we're at that point now where most of the things that we talk about with location-based features tend to be like, it's all been done before. To me, this is one of those things like visualization, interactive maps, understanding from a data perspective what's happening with all your locations. Um, I feel like it's all been done before, but hey, if you're with Tap Clicks and there's something we're missing here because the story wasn't super in depth, reach out to us, tell us what's going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that like we're at this place on this show, in this industry, with everything that's happening and changing with AI every week, right? It's like Come and impress us. To me, this wasn't really it. Yeah, I mean, not a lot of detail, obviously, in the story here. I think, you know, it seems like from a bit of research, these guys have been around for a while. Um, you know, they play in the SEO space. They play in the CRM space. They it looks like they have, um, you know, a uh, order entry platform for, you know, um, retail uh, side of things. So e-commerce as well. So they're kind of a little bit of everything. It seems, and you know now, um, you know they're layering in this, you know, sort of this this mapping location piece on top of what they do. So, you know, I'm with you. I think you know pretty much all of this stuff we've seen in different forms and with different companies, and you know, it's not anything that's technologically innovative here, but 
I think when you're in the, in a space like they are, uh, providing insights and SEO management and analytics and the things that they do, and you have a, let's say, a fairly mature, robust customer base that you've been working with for a number of years, probably this is just you know, additional features that you need to provide or customers are asking for that you didn't have in your platform. And, you know, you've got to meet those needs and maybe you can, you know, generate some incremental revenue, you know, from that, you know, by giving them some additional features they can turn on in a platform they already have. I don't see it as something that's going to generate net new customers for them per se, uh, because like I said, it's, it's table stakes for a lot of other technology companies within, you know, the LBMA ecosystem. So. Yeah. All right. Jumping on to our second story now. Um, this one's kind of interesting. So Core Logic has uh, launched a um, a new functionality to its one home platform using AI image search uh, capabilities. So this is a real estate platform, really focused on consumers who are you know looking you know to buy a home. And so, you know, these guys have been in this space for a long time. Um, they uh, It's available to 57,000 agents. They have 20 million monthly visits, 2.5 billion listing views, one of the highest net promoter scores out there uh, on their platform. But what's really cool about this is if you're in the home buying space um, and, you, you know, you're looking around, um, you know, we all have ideas of, you know, we like that for, that porch on that house we drove by or we like you know, the roof line of that one, or we like the yard on this one or whatever. So essentially what this thing is letting you do is upload photos of the things that you like, and then basically using AI, it's then searching the MLS listings to find properties that have, you know, those elements of properties that look like the things that you've uploaded that you're interested in. So I think it's kind of cool. So if you're looking for that certain exterior, or that certain kitchen or you know, the, you know, whatever your dream home is, this is a great way to sort of use AI to kind of match properties that are available, you know, that kind of match with the, you know, the image of what you're looking for. So this is available. It's called the one home, uh, which is one word, by the way, one home all, all smashed together, AI image search. Uh, it's available uh, in Canada and the U S and you could check it out at core logic. Uh, core logic is also one word smashed together. So what are your thoughts? I like this. Um, I love looking at houses just like as a hobby. <laughs> and I think it's great to be able to have different search features. I think um, it's hard. You know, I think there's a lot of limiting capabilities when you look at the traditional things like Zillow or just like your traditional MLS searches tend to be super antiquated when you go through your local real estate agent. So I think that um, anything that we can do to just improve and enhance how it is to help tailor your search or open up new parameters or um, things like that, I think is is really is really cool. So I like this uh, application of AI and I think it's something that's needed in a space that still has a lot to develop and grow. Awesome. All right. Okay, let's go to the food uh, side of tech and Instacart is partnering with uh, coupon giant Ibotta um, they've signed a deal and this is going to help provide customers with access to digital coupons, which is kind of cool, uh, delivered by cash back rewards platform, Ibotta. Um, so part of this is going to be, they're going to, Ibotta is going to be Instacart's preferred third party coupon provider um, for all eligible product categories that are available on grocery Um and so within their app and their website. So this gives Instacart like some oomph, I would say, and helps kind of strengthen their ties with retailers and shoppers. Um, I think the big impact here is because it's going to allow, there's like 2,400-ish uh, CPGs that participate in Ibotta's performance network. So now they're going to be able to send promotions to millions of extra shoppers via Instacart, right? Um, and Instacart... Uh, marketplace has over 1500 uh, retail banners and then they operate on 85,000 locations in North America. So big numbers there. It's like a huge reach. I think this is like a great partnership and matchup. Um, and Instacart's also looking to Ibotta to help its platform uh, drive revenue and consumer reach. So they have 6,000 CPG 
brands that they work with. And so that's obviously another extension of this partnership. Um, some interesting stats that I thought were worth noting on this story is that um, according to a recent study, more than 40% of U.S. grocery shoppers are using coupons um, on smartphones. That's twice the amount that are using paper coupons. I never use paper coupons. I always like save them and then I never use them because they get lost or thrown away or I forget them. So the idea of having something digital, I think, is just like so much better. Although sometimes I swear that they do the paper coupons and continue to not fix that problem so that people don't actually use them. I'm not sure. But um, I think this is a great, I do think this is a great partnership. I love the idea of being able to utilize coupons digitally, not have to cut things out, not have to save them. Everything's right there. And it actually made me think, hey, I wonder if I could actually save money by shopping on Instacart instead of going to the store myself. Um, so I think that it's a, it's a good opportunity to like open people back up. You know, a lot of us use Instacart throughout the pandemic. I think it's kind of like, subsided a little bit now we kind of go to the store a little bit more than we used to but the convenience of it is is really nice and so if you can package that with the savings aspect um i think this is a, a pretty solid business deal what you think yeah uh, not a ton to add to this i think that um the scale of the partnership I, it alone is is massive in terms of you know the number of locations and the number of retail brands providing you know uh discounts or coupons through through the park platform here. So I think it's great. I think for me, two things that come to mind. One, um, you know, as I'm listening to you talk about the story, I'm thinking about, you know, how earlier, you know, on, we used to talk about people using the Amazon app while they were, let's say in a Best Buy, right. And doing price comparisons and things like that. So I can see, you know, with people returning physically to grocery stores and, and to, uh, to Walmarts and, and places like that, you know, being able to pull up, you know, your Instacart app uh, and do that sort of same kind of price comparison while you're there. I think the second thing that, you know, I didn't see in the story and, you know, uh, I don't know if it, functionality is there, but, you know, to me, you know, and obviously we're, we're talking in a LBMA context here. So it would be really interesting to me if I'm storing digital coupons, you know, for, you know, certain retailers, certain grocery uh, chains, certain, CPG products, then, you know, if I walk into a, um, you know, a Target or I walk into a, uh, you know, a Kroger or what have you, and I've stored certain coupons for products, you know, in that particular, uh, available in that particular retailer, then from a geolocation perspective, then why not send me, like, push me a reminder saying, hey, we see you're at Kroger right now, you stored these coupons, which can be used today, you know, and, and then it kind of incents you to, a spend more money, um, but also then just you know not have those things sit in your digital wallet, you know, sort of going unused, right? So, um, I think there's a lot that can be done here. But I love the scale of the partnership. Yeah, it's almost like you would have programmatic bidding on contextual users like that have coupons stored, right? So, do you want to fight for this, you know, user who's in market for? mac and cheese like <laughs> or whatever it may be i mean that could be kind of cool yeah exactly <clears throat> excuse me um okay so moving on to our uh our final story now so our good friends at instagram are um testing out some new features uh on a limited scale uh with real-time location sharing so they're calling this the friend map uh and this is a obviously a complete ripoff of the snap map uh, feature. So this is uh, enabling you to, you know, post text, uh, post and text videos and updates to a map showing the location of where that content was made. Um, and then your friends can, can see these updates, you know, alongside yours um, in, in terms of, you know, where your friends posted, where, where you've posted those kinds of things. I think one of the other interesting features that they're playing around with in here is something, uh, called notes. Um, and so you can leave a note for your friends at, at a location. And so I show up at a, you know, at a Starbucks and, you know, my friends maybe were there you know earlier or, 
you know, maybe we were supposed to meet up there and I was late and now, you know, they've moved on to, you know, the next place that we were going to go to. And so there's a note that's been left there for me or those kinds of things saying, hey, meet us over here or whatever, right? So there's different ways, you know, to kind of leverage this. I think if you're traveling as a group, you know, you're all going to a concert or you're all going to a sporting event or you're going to something else, I think there's some some interesting functionality and, and feature sets here. Um, I don't really see, I see this as a consumer function. I don't see, you know, really a lot of brand uh, or business applications around this per se. Maybe if you're hosting some sort of, you know, party at a retail store, you know, a launch event or a new product, you know, launch or something like that, uh, there might be some applications. But, you know, from a, a scale perspective, I'm not really buying into that concept yet. But I think as a as a consumer tool with the notes capabilities, with the ability to kind of share on maps, and you can control who sees that. So you can choose from either close friends or followers. Uh that have followed you back. So, you know, there, there is some control there. Obviously you don't want to be sharing your location with everybody all the time. That would be scary, I think for some people. So um, yeah, interesting, you know, again, not super innovative. Snap is already doing this, but um, I think it kind of adds some, some good value to the Instagram uh, user base thoughts. You know, I always think like if these two companies had a theme song, it would be like, that one, anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> I right. can do anything better than you. That's what it feels like every week. It's like, no, you can't. Yes, I can. <laughs> Look at me. What I'm gonna... Yeah. And who did it first? Who right. did it first? I know. Um, I mean, I think these features are like, they're fun. Um, I think they, they are sticky. Like it, it brings a younger demographic into, um, using the maps, I think more often, um, I do agree with you that I'm not sure there's a brand application. I do think some of the features in terms of like a brand, like the one to many sharing is some of like what glimpse might offer, you know, um, in a different non-social type of environment. Um, so we see, or like find my friends, if you just want like the personal family sharing kind, kind of thing, like, but, um, I think that within, the social aspect of, of the use case. Yeah, it makes sense. They're not the first, but they probably have more scale. So yeah, Good. there you go. All right. So thank you everybody. Uh, you've been listening and watching episode number 683 of location weekly. Um, as always, we, uh, we thank you for your time. If you have story ideas, reach out to us. Uh, if you have feedback, if we've talked about your company on the show today, reach out to us. We'd love to like go a little deeper and hear directly from you, uh, what we might've missed. Um, and for those of us who are our loyal followers and listeners, um, you know, uh, give us some likes and love on whatever podcast platform you're consuming this on this week. So thank you everybody for your time. We'll see you next week with another show. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.